Chapters 1 through 6 of the First Book of Samuel from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The First Book of Samuel, Chapters 1 through 6. Chapter 1 there was a certain man of Ramathaim Zophim in Mount Ephraim, whose name was Alkana ben Jarkam, ben Aliaha, ben Toko, ben Suf, the Aphrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the first was Hannah, and the name of the second Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had none. This man went up yearly from his village to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, where two sons of Eli, Kaphni and Phinehas, were priests to the ever-living. When it was Alkanah's day for sacrifice, he gave to Penina his wife, and to all her sons and daughters, portions. But to Hannah he only gave a single portion, although he loved Hannah, for the ever-living had closed her womb. So she was vexed, anguished, and labored with rage, because the ever-living shut up her womb. He did this year after year, when he went up to the house of the ever-living, so she was vexed and would not eat. Alkanah therefore said to her, Wife Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart bad? Am I not better to you than ten sons? Hannah, however, arose after eating and drinking in Shiloh, and Eli the priest sat upon the chair at the door of the temple of the ever-living, for her soul was bitter, and she prayed to the ever-living, and weeping she wept. She also vowed a vow, and said, Lord of hosts, if you will look on the anguish of your handmaid, and remember me, and not forget your handmaid, but grant to your handmaid a male child, I will give him to the ever-living all the days of his life, and a razor shall not go over his head. But while she continued to pray before the ever-living, Eli watched her mouth. Hannah, however, spoke from her heart, only moving her lips, and no sound was heard. Consequently Eli thought she was drunk. Eli therefore said to her, why have you made yourself drunk? Cast the wine from you. But Hannah answered him, No, my lord, I am only a woman of depressed spirit. I have not drunk wine nor strong drink, but I am pouring out my soul before the ever-living. Do not consider your handmaid as a daughter of Belial, because I speak so much, for I have uttered my many griefs and sorrows so far. Then Eli replied and said, Go in peace and may the God of Israel give you the request you ask from him. And she answered, May your servant find favor in your sight. The woman then went away and ate, and afterwards her face was not the same. In the morning they got up and worshipped before the ever-living, and then returned to their home at Ramath, where Alkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the ever-living remembered her, and at the end of the year Hannah conceived and bore a son, and called his name Samuel because I have asked him from the ever-living. When the man Alkanah and all his family went up to sacrifice to the ever-living at the yearly sacrifice, and for his vows, Hannah went not up with him. For, she said to her husband, not until I wean the boy and take him up to the ever-living, then he shall always stay there. So Alkanah replied to his wife, Do as seems good to you. Stay until you wean him, and may the ever-living confirm his promise to you. Consequently the woman remained and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Then she went up with him when he was weaned, taking three bowls and an ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and arrived at the house of the ever-living in Shiloh with the lad, and killed the bull and brought the lad to Eli, and said, My lord, let your soul live. I, sir, am the woman who stood here at the door to pray to the ever-living. I prayed for this lad, and the ever-living granted to me the request I asked. So now, as I asked him from the ever-living, I myself dedicate him to the ever-living all the days of his life, and he shall worship the ever-living here. Chapter 2 Then Hannah gave thanks, and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. By the Lord my horn is exalted, my face triumphs over my foes. For I rejoice in your salvation. None is sacred like you, Lord for there is none beside you, nor fortress like our God. 
increase not your proud speech pride comes badly from your mouth for the lord is a god of knowledge though trifles are not weighed the bows of strength are broken and the feeble girt with might the pampered beg for food but the hungry now have rest the childless has borne seven and the many sunned has want the lord kills and he revives brings to the grave and raises the lord makes poor and rich bows down and again exalts he lifts the depressed from dust exalts the poor from dunghills to sit along with princes to inherit the throne of power for the earth's supports are the lord's and upon them he rests the world he guards the feet of his saints but the wicked destroys in gloom for man is not strong by wealth but they fail who strive with him when the lord thunders from heaven he rules to the bounds of the earth and gives his chosen leader power and exalts his anointed's horn alkanah afterwards returned to his home at ramaph but the lad served the ever-living with eli the priest the sons of eli however were profligates they did not recognize the ever-living although the priests governed the people whenever a person offered a sacrifice a lad came from the priest when the flesh was boiling with a three-pronged fork in his hand and stuck it into the cauldron or boiler or kettle or pot all that came up on the fork the priest took for himself they did the same to every israelite who came to shiloh also before the time that they burnt the fat the priest's lad came and said to the man sacrificing give the priest meat from the ribs for he will not accept boiled meat from you it must be raw if the person replied to him let the fat be burnt first then take what you desire he would answer him give it at once and if not i shall take it by force the young men were also very great sinners against the ever-living for they corrupted the women who brought offerings to the ever-living but samuel served before the ever-living as an assistant girded with an ephod his mother also made him an embroidered robe and brought it up to him every year when she went with her husband to sacrifice the yearly sacrifice then eli blessed alkanah and his wife and said the ever-living granted you an heir from this woman in answer to her request from the ever-living then they returned to their village and now the ever-living favored hannah and she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters but the lad samuel grew up with the ever living when eli became very old he heard of all the doings of his sons to all israel and how they corrupted the women who came to worship at the door of the hall of assembly so he said to them what are these things that you do which i have heard of the vile practices towards all these people refrain my sons for it is not a good report that i hear of your practices against the ever living if a man sins against a man they intercede with god but if a man sins against the ever-living who can intercede for him but they would not listen to the voice of their father for the ever-living had decided to kill them but the young man samuel advanced and became great and good both with the ever-living and also with men a man of god therefore was sent to eli and said to him thus says the ever-living i revealed myself to the house of your fathers when you were among the mitzrayim and i chose it from all the tribes of israel to myself as a priesthood to offer incense upon my altar and to wear an ephod before me and i gave to the house of your fathers all the gifts of the children of israel then why do you despise my sacrifices and offerings which i commanded for frailty and respect your sons more than me by letting them fatten themselves with the best of all the offerings of my people israel therefore the ever-living god of israel says i promised that your house and the house of your fathers should walk before me forever but now the ever-living has said to me tonight whoever honors me i will honor and whoever degrades me shall be degraded now the time has come when i will break your necks and the heirs of the house of your fathers from being noble in your house and you may expect suffering instead of pleasantness from all that gives israel pleasure for there shall not be a noble in your house for all time however i will not cut off every one of your descendants forever at my altar to exhaust your eyes and make your soul languish yet great men shall die from your house and this shall be the proof your two sons kophni and phinehas shall both of them die in one day 
then i will appoint for myself a faithful priest who will do according to my own heart and soul and i will build him a perfect house and cause him to walk before my messiah for all time and then all the remnant of your house shall come and bow to him for a penny of money and for a piece of bread and say i beg you to admit me to a priest's office that i may eat a mouthful of food chapter three meanwhile the young man samuel served the ever-living before eli but a word from the ever-living came seldom in those days there was no frequent vision at that time and when eli was in bed in his residence and his eyes were becoming heavy he was not able to see and the lamp of god was becoming dim and samuel was in bed in the temple of the ever-living where the ark of god was then the ever-living called to samuel and he replied i am here and ran to eli and said i am here for you called me but he answered i did not call you return to bed so he went and laid down then the ever-living called again samuel and samuel arose and went to eli and said i am here for you called me but he replied i did not call my son return to bed samuel however was beginning to recognize the ever-living and the word of the ever-living was beginning to be revealed to him so the ever-living again called samuel samuel for the third time and he arose and went to eli and said i am here for you did call me then eli perceived that the ever-living had called to the young man therefore eli said to samuel go lie down and if he calls to you then say speak jehovah for your servant listens so he lay down in his chamber then the ever-living confirmed it and called as before samuel samuel at which samuel replied speak jehovah for your servant listens then the ever-living said to samuel i will now do a thing in israel at which both the ears of all hearing it shall tingle on that day i will heap upon eli all that i have said concerning his house the strong and the weak for i will display myself to him as i myself will punish his family for ever on account of the outrages of his sons whom he did not restrain and therefore i have sworn to the house of eli that the sin of the house of eli shall not be expiated by sacrifice or gift for ever but samuel lay still until dawn when he opened the doors of the house of the ever-living for samuel feared to report the vision to eli but eli called samuel and said samuel my son and he replied i am here then he asked what was the thing that was told to you hide it not from me tell me every word which was told to yourself samuel consequently reported to him the whole communication and hid nothing from him to which he replied it was the ever-living let him do what is good in his sight thus samuel became great and the ever-living was with him and none of his words fell to the ground and all israel recognized from dan to beersheba that samuel was a true teacher from the ever-living the ever-living also continued to appear in shiloh for the life revealed himself to samuel in shiloh by the word of the ever-living chapter four and the word of samuel penetrated all israel afterwards israel went to meet the philistines in war and encamped at ebenezer and the philistines encamped in Aphek then the philistines disposed themselves to meet israel and opened out to the battle and israel was routed before the philistines and they slew in the open field about four thousand men so when the army returned to the camp the judges of israel asked why has the ever-living routed us before the philistines to-day let us take the ark of the ever-living with us from shiloh and go to oppose them and it will save us from the clutch of our enemies the army therefore sent to Shiloh, and brought the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who rests between Cherubim, from there. But the two sons of Eli, Kophni and Phinehas, went with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Ever-Living came to the camp, and the children of Israel saw it, they shouted aloud so that the earth shook, 
and the Philistines heard the sound of the shouting, and asked, What is the noise of this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews? And they were informed that the ark of the ever-living had come to the camp. Then the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come to their camp, and exclaimed, Woe to us! Who can deliver us from the hand of this splendid God of theirs? The God who defeated the Mitzurites with such a total defeat in the desert! Let us harden ourselves and be men, Philistines, for fear they should enslave you as you enslaved them. So be men and warriors! The Philistines consequently fought and routed the Israelites, and each man fled to his home, for the defeat was very great. There fell also thirty thousand regular troops of Israel, and the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Kaphni and Phinehas, were killed. But a man of Benjamin fled from the battle, and came to Shiloh on the same day, with his clothes torn and earth on his head. And when he arrived, Eli was sitting on his chair beside the road to Mitzvah, for his heart was troubled about the ark of God. And the man came to report to the town, and he called to all the village. When Eli heard the sound of wailing, he asked, What means this noise in the crowd? So the man hastened and came and told it to Eli. Now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were fixed so that he was not able to see. So the man said, I have come from the battlefield. I have fled from the battlefield today. Then he asked, What was the result, my son? When the reporter answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there is a great panic on the army, and your two sons are killed, Kaphni and Phinehas, and the Ark of God has been captured. But when the Ark of God was mentioned, he fell off the chair backwards towards the side of the gate and broke his neck, for he was an old man and heavy. He had ruled in Israel forty years. The wife of Phineas was near being delivered of a child when she heard the report of the capture of the Ark of God, and of the death of her father-in-law and husband, and she fell down and brought forth, for her grief overwhelmed her. But at the moment of her death the attendants who stood by her said, Never mind, for you have borne a son. She answered not, for her heart moved not. They consequently called the lad Ichabod meaning that the glory has gone from Israel by the capture of the Ark of God, and the death of her father-in-law and her husband. Therefore they wailed, Gone is the glory of Israel, for the Ark of God has been captured. Chapter 5 When the Philistines had captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod, and then the Philistines took it to the temple of Dagon and set it beside Dagon. But when the Ashdodites arose on the morrow, they saw Dagon had fallen on his face to the earth before the ark, and the head of Dagon, and the two palms of his hands cut off at the wrists, were on the threshold. Only a stump of Dagon was left to himself. Consequently the priest of Dagon, and all who enter the temple of Dagon, step over the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. Then the hand of the ever-living was heavy upon the Ashdodites, and he desolated them, and afflicted them with tumors in their extremities. The people of Ashdod consequently were terrified, and said, The ark of the God of Israel shall not remain with us, for his hand is hard upon us, and upon Dagon our God. They therefore sent and assembled all the lords of the Philistines, and asked, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They said, Gath shall hold the ark of the God of Israel, and have the custody of the ark of the God of Israel. But after they received it, the hand of the ever-living brought very great confusion, and afflicted the inhabitants of that city from the least to the greatest, and they broke out in tumors. Then they sent the ark of God to Akron, but when the ark of God arrived at Akron, the Akronites cried out, exclaiming, Why do you send the ark of the God of Israel to us, to kill us and our people? So they sent and assembled all the lords of the Philistines, and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel, and return it to its place, and do not kill us and our people, for there has been deadly suffering in all the city. The hand of that God has been very heavy here. Even the people who are not killed are afflicted with tumors, and the shrieks of the city have ascended to the heavens. Chapter 6 
The ark of the ever-living was in the country of the Philistines seven months. Then the Philistines summoned their priests and diviners to inquire, What must we do with the ark of the ever-living? Inform us how we must send it back to its place. And they replied, If you send back the ark of the God of Israel, you should not send it back empty, but you must return to him an offering so that he may cure you and inform you why he did not turn his hand from you. Then they asked, What is the offering that we must return to him? And they replied, Five tumors of gold, the same as the number of the lords of the Philistines, and five mice of gold, for the same plague was upon you and your lords. Make also representations of the tumors, and of the mice that have ravaged the country, and pay honor to the God of Israel. Perhaps then he will lift his hand from upon you, and from your gods, and from your country. For why should you stupefy your hearts, as the Mitzurites and Pharaoh stupefied their hearts, so that they would not allow them to go up from them? Yet, when he had afflicted them, they sent them away, and they went. So now set to work and prepare a new cart, and select two heifers, who are suckling calves, who have not had yokes upon them, and harness the heifers to the cart, but put their young back to the stable. Then take the ark of the ever-living, and put it upon the cart, with the things of gold which you send to him as an offering. Put them in a box beside it, and send it away, and let it go. But watch, if it goes up the road to Beth Shemesh, then he has sent these great sufferings to us. But if not, then we shall know that his hand has not struck us. It will have been an accident. Those men consequently did so, and took two nursing heifers, and harnessed them to the cart, but kept their young in the stable. They also placed the Ark of the Ever-Living upon the cart, with the chest, and the mice of gold, and the representations of their tumors, and the heifers went straight in a track for the road to Beth Shemesh, by the highway from the first, going along they bellowed, but did not turn to the right or the left, and the lords of the Philistines followed after them to the borders of Beth Shemesh. Now the harvesters of Beth Shemesh were reaping wheat on the plain, and they looked up and saw the ark, and were glad of the sight. Then the cart came to the farm of Joshua the Beth Shemeshite, and stood there, where there was a great stone. So they broke up the wood of the cart, and offered the heifers as a burnt offering to the ever-living. The Levites, however, took down the ark of the ever-living, and the chest which was with it, in which were the things of gold, and placed it upon the great stone, and the people of Beth Shemesh burnt offerings and sacrificed sacrifices on that day to the ever-living, whilst the five lords of the Philistines looked on, and then returned to Akron. These were the tumors of gold which the Philistines returned as an offering to the ever-living. For Ashdod, one. For Gaza, one. For Ascalon, one for gath one for akron one with mice of gold equal to the number of all the cities of the philistim for the five lordships for fortresses and open villages and the great stone upon which the ark of the ever-living rested can be seen on the farm of joshua the beth shemshite to this day but the ever-living punished some of the inhabitants of beth shemesh because they had looked into the ark he punished seventy persons and fifty bullocks so the men murmured among the people, for the ever-living struck the people with a great stroke. The inhabitants of Beth Shemesh consequently asked, Who is able to stand before the holy Lord God, and to what purpose has he come up to us? They therefore sent messengers to the people of Kreth jirim to say, The Philistines have sent us the ark of the ever-living. Come down and take it to yourselves. The people of Krith Jerim consequently came and took the Ark of the Ever-Living and brought it to the house of Abinadab on the hill, and he devoted his son Elazar to take care of the Ark of the Ever-Living. The Ark of the Ever-Living, however, remained in Krith Jarim for a long period, twenty years altogether, and the whole house of Israel mourned after the Ever-Living. The End of Chapters 1 through 6 of the First Book of Samuel Recording by Mark Penfold.